Your narcissist is cursed. He might think that, he might believe it, but I need you to understand he's cursed. Now, do I believe in this level of curses? Do I believe that he got this, this curse passed on to him from like a witch or something like that? No, that's not what I'm saying. Saying there's this piece of him that's not willing to actually see reality. It's not willing to actually open up to what's going on. And as a result, it's only going to continue to happen over and over and over again. And it's not this spiritual curse that's going to be on him and he's going to continue to show up toxic just because he's been destined to do that. He also has a choice of how he's going to show up on a day-to-day -day basis. You see, the lie that a lot of times narcissists believe is that they don't have a choice. That that's just how they were made. That that's just what they're stuck with. That that's just the life that they picked, that they chose. That's the card they drew before the eons of time. Who knows? You see, there's a point in our relationship that I thought I was cursed. Legitimately, that, that's the story that I told myself. That's the lie that I tried to believe. Why did I think I was cursed? Because of the affairs. I started to think this after the third affair. Because for me, I was like, I don't know how to stop this. I tried on the first one. I tried to stop it. I tried to go to therapy. tried to go to counseling. We tried to deal with it. We tried to fix it. Nothing seemed to actually fix it. Like I thought it was fixed. Then it was just going into the next one. And so by the time I got to the third one, I was like, maybe this is just my, my plot in life. Like maybe I just need to mark on the calendar every like couple of years. This will happen. Do it. Move on. Then we're, then we're good. That's how I wanted to jump. That's why I wanted to change it around in my thought process, in my mindset, to be able to tell myself a story. Hey, maybe I'm cursed. Do you realize how wild that sounds sometimes? It sounds wild to me, like saying it back. But that's where my reality was. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, this is just where I am. This is just what's going to happen for the rest of my life. See, there's this piece inside of narcissism that if a narcissist isn't willing to be honest, nothing will change. I've had a couple of people that have emailed me or messaged me uh, probably in the past like two weeks. And a couple of them, they're either narcissists and, uh, or they're just pissed off people. And, and it's been kind of interesting because it's a couple of them have been like, why do you say you're the only one that can change? I'm like, I've never said that. They're like, why do you say you're the only one that's like this? And I'm like, nope, never talked about that. They're like, why do you say, and the list goes on and on. And I'm like, I'm not the only one that can change. There's other people that have. Lee Hammock, mental healness. Like he's another huge influencer that's changed, that's grown, that's developed, that has a connected relationship with. There's a lot of people that have grown and that have developed and have changed. I'm not the only one. But I do say a lot of times that narcissists won't change. While that might seem like I'm putting a, a diagnosis on someone or while I'm pushing someone down saying, hey, this will never happen or this will never get better, you need to understand at the same time, the majority of narcissists will not make a change because the majority of narcissists are not willing to be honest. Honesty is this piece that is exposing for a narcissist. It exposes all the shit that's inside. It, it, it like opens up and it reveals, ah, there's this stuff inside of my heart that I don't want to feel. I don't want to experience. I see this happen even today. As I interact with my wife and there's different emotions and feelings that she has on a day-to-day -day basis, sometimes it will trigger me and I'll be like, ah, what is this? Like, why is what she's feeling right now? Why is this poking at me? Realizing that there's an emotion, there's a feeling that I haven't dealt with. And this is the piece that narcissists are running away from. They're running away from truth. Not your truth, not my truth, not his truth. They're running away from the actual reality of the situation, the facts. I did for such a long period of time. I felt that if I kept running, just, it wouldn't catch up with me. Yeah, I might be cursed and I might have like the same stuff happen like every couple of years. But otherwise, just viewed, ah, it's not the big of a deal. What you have to realize a lot of times is narcissists will get to a place where they will continue to hide, sedate, to run, to like flee from anything so that they're not held accountable. That's the biggest thing is the narcissist doesn't want to be accountable for the shit that he's doing. I thought that I got to a place where I was cursed. And the reason why I thought that is because I didn't want to be honest. 
I didn't want to actually change who I was. I didn't want to actually change how I was showing up. I didn't want to actually be honest about the things that were happening inside. So I was like, well, maybe I can just say it's a curse. Sounds a little bit like the diagnosis, right? Maybe I could just blame it on the diagnosis. And then it won't be that big of a deal. Maybe I could just say it's who I am. It won't be that big of a deal. Many of you have already had this inside the toxic relationship with your narcissist saying that he's a sex addict. That's just who I am. I'm just a sex addict. So as a result, I just have to have sex. I have a high sex drive. So you either need to give me sex or I'm going to go find, find it from someone else. But a lot of people that like to live on labels. They like to live and die on labels. I'm not a narcissist. I just have ADHD. Yeah, because that ADHD makes you rage out and cheat. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm not a narcissist. I'm just bipolar. Okay, and then how does that explain all the other traits of narcissism that you match up to? What I need you to understand is so many people get stuck on labels. Narcissists will use labels to justify, to run away from. You'll use labels to stay longer, to justify why you stay longer. At the end of the day, I need you to understand the label doesn't matter. You're probably going to tell people that will comment on this video be like, yes, it does. Guess what? It doesn't. What matters is what the other person in your life, how he's actually demonstrating. That's it. Because if he's a diagnosed narcissist and he's demonstrating gaslighting, lying, cheating, abuse, no empathy, entitlement, and if he's not a diagnosed narcissist and he's demonstrating lying, cheating, gaslighting, abuse, no empathy, entitlement, does it really matter? Some of you are waiting for a diagnosis and you're waiting for him to admit that he's a narcissist so you have the guts to leave. Some of you right now are waiting to see if he'll admit it, that he's a narcissist, if he'll admit the shit that's inside, and then you'll have the justification to leave. Guess what? You won't. You won't. I'm like, well, that seems very assumptive of you. No. It's very realistic of me because of the many people that I've seen it happen to over and over and over again. Because you tell yourself this, well, if he was diagnosed this, then I would actually leave. Guess what? He gets the diagnosis, tells you that he wants help and says, don't leave me in this time of need. Now that you know it and I know it, maybe we can work on it together. And guess what? You don't leave. You stay stuck. He knows it. He's counting on it. Part of the curse that narcissism goes through is not just the piece of not being able to be honest and to not tell the truth and not be vulnerable and all these pieces, but it's also the piece of shame. And shame is this like overwhelming topic and it's hard because sometimes initially people are like, where's the shame come from? And the easiest way to be able to describe it is shame comes from the incongruency of who he is versus the mask he's putting out there. So like I put out this mask of like, I'm a good Christian faithful husband, but in reality, I was a liar, cheater, and gaslighter. Therefore, there's shame because I, I would know, hey, this is what people know. And if they didn't see this, they would see this. And I wouldn't want this. That would be shame. That would be guilt. I would feel bad. Should, because I was doing bad things. But narcissists typically want to be able to run them from shame. Like I have to avoid it. If I avoid it, then I'll be okay. If I avoid it, then life will be okay. If I avoid it, then I can keep moving forward. If I avoid it, then... And so this curse that's happening on the narcissism and on the narcissist person in your life is this aspect of running away from shame and running away from truth. Truth exposes shame. Shame exposes truth. You start to realize if you look at this from different aspects that he's typically running away from the things that actually would liberate him. This is the piece that's so messed up and is so confusing for you. Because you're like, why doesn't he just see it? If you just be honest, this wouldn't have happened. Well, yeah, but if he was honest, then he thinks that this would have happened anyways because he was honest. It's a wild thing. It doesn't even make sense. But it's how he's logicking in his mind to try to be able to justify the lies that he's doing. Are you stuck in this current reality where you're stuck with a toxic person that's doing this to you over and over and over again? Are you stuck thinking, maybe I can get out of this. Maybe I can figure out the label. Maybe I can finally break free. If you're ready to actually do that, like not work on changing him, not be a victim to him anymore, and actually learn how to step up in your power, your confidence, and clarity, then reach out. Go to rawmotivations.com slash breakthrough because I'd love to be able to talk to you and help you move forward in your healing, in your growth, and in your development.